Right, I'm still in year 11, chapter 2 of you. Having a quick look at 31. It'll only be quick because that flickering is really annoying. The graph shows the change in temperature for a solid as it's heated by a 1,000 watt hot plate and turns into a liquid. We don't actually need to know that it's a 1,000 watt hot plate. That's just a bit of a red herring. Deduce which phase has the greatest specific heat capacity, solid or liquid? So... This is going to be the solid heating. Here it is, changing phase, turning into a liquid. Here it is as a liquid. So we've got no numbers, but that doesn't matter. We're going to have a scale across here. We'll just call them units. And we've got units up this way. So in one unit of time, when it was a solid, it went up one, two, three, four units of temperature. When it was a liquid in one unit of time, because the temperature's being supplied evenly, that heat, sorry. So in one unit of time here, it only goes up two temperature divisions. So that would mean that the specific heat capacity of the liquid is double that of the solid because you've only got half the temperature change. So that one's not too hard. This one is interesting. Substance in a solid form at zero degrees, the amount of heat added to the substance and its temperature are plotted in the graph below. Specific heat capacity of the solid is 500 joules per kilogram per degree Kelvin. Determine the specific latent heat of fusion for the melting process. All right, so um, instead of looking at that, we might just sketch it quickly over here because that's pretty hard on your eyes. So this is question 32. It's a triple star. I don't know that it's all that hard compared to that question 12, which we did earlier. So 32. So we've just got this little graph. Oh, that's a bit wobbly. Why does it do that? There we go. And it's going to go shump, shump, shump. And this is 400 joules and this is 800 joules that's the important bit and this was 80 and that was zero I think that's all we need in solid form at zero the heat's added to it specific heat capacity of the solid is 500 so that's only in that phase there c equals 500 joules kilograms per kelvin i said degrees kelvin before that's wrong it's just kelvin they're not degrees all right so it wants me to work out the latent heat of fusion. So I'm after LF. So if I don't know what to do, I go looking for a formula that has LF in it. And there is only one. It's Q equals MLF. So it would be nice if I had M. I've got Q. I can get that off the graph. If I had M, I could work out LF. So it did give me this extra bit of information here. And I can work out Q off the graph. And I can work out a temperature change. So I could work out the mass from this solid stage here. So if I use Q equals MC delta T for when it was a solid... I can see from the graph that 400 joules of energy was added. The mass we're looking for, it told us the specific heat capacity was 500. And the change in temperature, well, it went from 0 to 80. So times 80. So that gives us 400 over 4,000. Oh no, 40,000. One, two, three. Yeah, 40,000. One more. It's M. 
So m equals 0 0.01 kgs. So I can use that m now up here. I can get the heat. So the phase here, change of phase, is 400 again. So Q equals 400. And we've got the mass is 0 0.01. So light heat diffusion shouldn't be hard to get. So we've got Q equals MF 400, 0, 1, LF equals 40,000 joules kilogram per kilogram per Kelvin. Done. No, it's not, there's no Kelvin because it's not changing temperature, haha. -ha. It's just joules per kilogram.